I am Michael Bresnan. I've been working over well, lectures, my father's and my grandfather's premises, and I started as a young lad, and I was really here since 1959 onwards. My earliest thing, it was very diverse in a sense. There were a lot of butchers, a lot of fish, individual fish stalls, and people and horse and carts bringing in the vegetables that you don't see now. From 1898, um, that's a, a long stretch to, to keep the family business going. Well, my grandfather and, his, and my grandmother, they started it in 18. 98. My father uh, certainly was in charge from about the 1930s onwards until really into the late 70s. So uh, he was he, he was the man in charge for, for over 40 years, and I'm here since. What's your standout memory of the market? Well, I suppose as individual things, it would have been probably President Kennedy coming to Cork in 63. The, uh, the market was functioning uh, when he came in, but I actually got a chance to slip up in where Burton's and could go up on the roof and saw him coming down Patrick Street even with a white coat on. It was always a thing, Michael, that you, you would come into this? Well, it was in the sense that I always helped out my father even uh, at a very young age. I wasn't interested in school. I was more interested in this. So when I was always kind of working, I saw school to me was a bit of a nuisance or a, a bore because I was used to dealing with people. You must meet some great characters coming through the doors. Oh yes, there was characters all our lives, uh, different types of characters. Uh, when I was very young, there were the likes of Andy God, you had another fellow, Denny Crane was around for a period. There's nearly always some fellow turns up as a character every five or six years, and last for about ten years. I'm um, Don O'Reilly, um, the O'Reilly and Sons. We've been in the market for over 100 years. It would have been my grandmother originally after my grandfather died. And my dad and his um, brother, Stephen and Morris, they took it over and I took it over in 2003. When I was very small, actually, we weren't where we are now up the front of the market. We were actually down where Hannel's Fish is and I remember being down there as a very young boy now and um, we used to have two stalls down there. My dad and my uncle had one and their cousins had another one. They are both doing tripe and machine next to each other. It's a different times completely. Like, yeah, the place would be thronged all together that time because there was um, a lot more people shopping inside in town. There was, there was less supermarkets and um, outlets on the outside, of the, on the outskirts of the city, like, so. Exactly. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we've got your ass, Thank you very much. Enjoy. My name is Margo Ryan Murphy and I'm here in the Rooshi Food King. We are here since the 1960s. My mother and father, who was Michael F. Murphy and Peggy Murphy, country people who emigrated to Cork City. I worked here as a young girl since the age of 10 years of age. And in those times we sold fruit and vegetables and at Christmas times, things like everyday eating like avocados were a really speciality. Pineapples, big specialities, only at Christmas time. We sold a lot of fruit to a lot of the north side of Cork City and of the south siders and that was long before there was any supermarkets when all the women of the houses got on their number eight and number seven bus and came into Cork City, got their bags and messages, stood at the bus stop and got their bus home with their bags. I can remember we sold a lot of seconds and fruits, so especially in the summertime, the weather might be fine and my father would buy in a blast of bananas that maybe, I can remember, they were 20 for a euro and he would stand out in the aisle there. You wouldn't be left to touch the bananas because they were ripe, but they were fantastic. And who doesn't remember an old-fashioned banana sandwich? I'm a Northside girl. There wasn't a lot of money around the city then and um, we were feeding some of Cork City and beautiful pears and banana sandwiches. So now we're here. Today is the birthday and things have changed. You now have people shopping in the market. Uh, we're, we are third generation traders. We have changed a lot. We moved from the fruit and veg and we moved in to the Irish food. From small producers, we sell lots of beautiful raw local honey, homemade jams. We sell the old half dozen of eggs and the homemade brown bread and the bally cotton potatoes in the summertime. But I think the shopper in the market has changed. The English market, what makes us different to everybody else is of course the beautiful food, but it is also the amazing character of our traders. Hello, how are we? You okay, look? Willa Martin is my name. Came into the market when I was about 13 years of age. 
and it's that in the fish shop with all the chains across the way there and it's kept going until I went out my own business about 20 years ago and I try and make myself whole now like <laughs> we see a lot of people coming in and out you know through the years like ups and downs and everything like and when you go back with the good old days the old crack was mighty like you know you have different people now coming in younger generations again like but when you go back with the old people they were more uh, more like uh, ball hopping like but no you might have a way to say something to another person he might give a clatter or something like you know but we find it that don't through the years like the mark have changed an awful lot like from this area of the mark was all fish and then you had all the butchers you had the, the veg and the thing you never have long like you like cheese or you no know, but we had all that now next door and it's all changed from different uh, varieties and it makes an awful lot of difference for people that they can see more why don't you have a name on the stall because <laughs> <laughs> I never I never got into it to put my name over the stall and there's a lot of people know me by no name over the stall but like when you go back through the years the ages like they all had names no? well it's just too late now for me to put a name over there I say <laughs> Paul Murphy, Collins Meats. I'm in the market 62 years. My mother's family before, they were the Collins. I'm fourth generation. My son who was with me, Alan, is fifth generation. I can recall 40 individual family butchers. There was at least 10 fishmongers and as many again uh, fruit and veg. But as years went on then and supermarkets and market areas opened up, it became a little bit more difficult with so many butchers. So maybe 20, 25 years ago, it started to to diversify and we got different types of businesses in here. We have traders now from all over the world. The things on go, there was a lot more camaraderie in here. We had a lot of character traders in the market, but we had a lot of individuals who frequented the market. Guys that come to to mind, one guy named Danny Tarr, on a quiet day, he'd give us an area. Johnny Forty Coats was another guy. Uh, Holy Joe was another guy that just frequented the markets. There was always a bit of a row going on between somebody, you know. I remember the messenger boy strike back in the 60s. They went on strike for four shillings a day. But they showed their anger by coming in force through the market. About 50 messenger boys shouting for their rights. And I think generally the, the traders gave in at that stage and said... No messages were being delivered, so we said, I think we generally felt we better meet them halfway, so we we did a deal with them. Other than that, there's not huge changes. Hopefully, my son is with me now, and uh, I have no doubt that he'll get his life out of it, you know. Oh, there you go. Polly Noonan, Kathleen Noonan's stall. My mother opened the stall in 1955. And we're still here. We've seen a lot of people come and go. Saw a lot of new stalls coming in. It's great to work in here. Very unique market. And I would be the second generation. What was the stall like when your mom opened it? Well, there was no um, fridge counters. It was just a timber counter. And she sold off of that. When it got updated, then all the fridge counters came in. And we're still selling the same product, all the pig's meat. What is it that you have here that is so special? You know most of the customers by name. They won't get this treatment in a supermarket. We really treat our customers uh, very well. I'm Ken Barrett in the meat centre of the market and I'm here for 40 years. My memories in the market are 10 hours a day. That's my memories in the market, but brilliant. It's a lovely place, absolutely wonderful place. It's a pity that more cork people don't use it for business. Oh, we've had fabulous stories about it. A lot of them I couldn't tell you or I'd be shot. But uh, the market's a fabulous place. But we've had bad days there too, like, as well as good times with the Queen and Prince Charles. How did you come to be a butcher? By accident. Shorts of education, so there was nothing around for me but a builder's labour or a butcher. And the butcher was easier. I done both, and the money was better. How did you get the stall in the market? With cash. <laughs> Absolutely with cash from the Bank of Ireland. The 230 years in the market, what do you think it is that has helped it to survive and continue to thrive? It's just a unique place. People can't believe when they come in that people are so close to each other and there's a great atmosphere between them. And we work hard at it in here to keep it vibrant. And it's down to the traders. Thank you very much. Mary Mulcahy from the Chicken Inn Grand Prix Market. In the market since 1955, I'm now over 60. 
when I left school, um, my father had just opened a shop in the market. He had a poultry business in Cork and he did all export to England. And he decided, look, if we can open a shop in Cork, it will help when export wouldn't be going that well. And that time you had fresh butter that you made up by the pound. You had fresh chicken that was cleaned trust as they called it at the counter when the person bought the chicken chicken was a Sunday dinner really at the time so that meant you dealt to strictly weekend trade for chicken. It has changed a lot when I came in here we had no refrigeration but the market was built in such a way that you had cross breezes so but as well as that you only brought, bought your product per day. Naturally you wouldn't have the volume you have today because people shopped they shopped every day it changed then I remember when I went to see my first counter fridge I had to go to Dublin to see a fridge to be here so long and to be amongst such long established stalls as well Mary it must have been an incredible few decades watching the market evolve it was yeah it was I think long ago I feel we looked out for one another more long ago people were more casual You then you had less variety in here you had the butcher You had the egg merchant, you had the fish stall, and you had uh, the like of us then selling poultry. And naturally, rents were cheap, so you, you weren't chasing business as you would be today. What is your most significant memory of the market? Well, looking back, I suppose at Christmas, it was so kind of exciting when you got in the turkeys and you hung up the turkeys. People came in then and they put their name on their own turkey and then maybe... The granny or the auntie or the daughter came in and had to look at her turkey hanging up. <laughs> and uh, I remember when I came in here first, we had a butcher across the road, Tim O'Sullivan. His sons are there all the time. When my father came in then, he spoke to Timmy across and he said, would you keep an eye on Mary? That's how they looked out for one another. If you were new in here, they helped you and they showed you the ropes and got around. And people say, will you retire? I said, for what? sure I have it here I slow down I can come and go and I said there's no need to uh, retire take up golf take up bridge no I'm quite happy with what I'm doing